this is Duke University. What is a story when we're talking about women in sports? There's a lot that happens in um, uh, media engagement with women's sports that actually <laughs> makes it hard to access stories in women's sports. I have never seen a woman humiliate a player so aggressively and so deliberately and with so much joy. I could barely understand how I felt about Marta in that moment. And part of that was because of the ways in which her actions within this performance in the Women's World Cup challenged a lot of it uh, challenged my sense of my understanding of what athletic performance meant and what it did. Um, and I also was surprised at how deeply gendered my own understandings of that potential had always already been. And for me, this is particularly surprising because the field with which I'm associated is queer studies. Right? I work in gender and sexuality studies. I have never not interrogated assumptions about gender and sexuality in my work. <coughs> I hadn't realized that I had not translated the intellectual work and the political work that I was doing in relationship to avant-garde performance or underground performances um, and uh, visual art into how I looked at and understood and interacted with, with sports right, as a spectator. Uh, there's a, a, a very st strong codes regarding um, um, gender and performance in sport. Um, and every now and again, you'll see women break them. Um, and it usually becomes headline news. It becomes a story about female monstrosity. Uh, because Brazil's performance, this was so extraordinary, and the sports media, especially English language sports media in general, could care less about uh, international women's soccer, nobody noticed that Marta samba her defender. Right. She took a move that is actually pretty common in soccer, which is the kind of twirling of your foot, um, your free foot, and you're trying to trick, trick the defender. But she put a little extra something in it, and that extra something is visibly recognizable as dance. She actually danced her defender. Right? And it was because by this point, everyone knew they were got, not going to get the ball off of Marta. All they could do was try to contain and pressure her to give it up. Right? So, uh, she was relishing this moment because she knew even that she could actually toy with them, right? toy with her opponent because her opponent wasn't going to actually try to go in for the ball. My path since I saw Marta play and she sort of turned me out and made me kind of think like, why don't I know more about her? Why don't I know more about the Brazilian national squad? Has had me looking at what constitute the sort of the big, the big stories in, in, in women's sports culture. Right? And those stories are not only stories of, of exceptional ability and stories of success on the national stage. They're stories of enormous hardship, right? And even in life-threatening conditions in some cases. In 2007, this is remarkable, right? This is another thing that's really not a story. In 2007, when the, uh, Brazil, they were uh, second in the Women's World Cup, um, so they lost to Germany. In the, the, the closing ceremony, as they, they walked past FIFA officials and shook their hands, Members of the team carried a banner that read, Brazil, we need your support. Right? They mean that from their country, but they mean more specifically from the CBF. Right? By this point, the women's national team had written a, a public letter to their federation, pointing out that they still hadn't been paid the money that is due to the program, never mind the players, but to the program for winning the Pan American Games. When they went into the 2011 World Cup, they hadn't been paid the money that they, they earned by qualifying for the World Cup. Right? That's money that goes into supporting the, the basic operations of the program. The vast majority of women players, the money that they get from winning tournaments is their salary. It's what they pay their rent with. Right? It's actually what they live on. So withholding money from women athletes uh, is, um, I mean, withholding money from any athlete like that is, 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 is shitty. Excuse me. Um, but withholding money from women athletes who basically barely access to any kind of professional level of support at all is unforgivable. There was another um, sort of story unfolding in South African women's soccer that was not being that was being ignored um, actively, I think, um, which was that the South African women's national team, um, shortly after the, the the men's World Cup and sort of after some of uh, tournaments that the uh, games that the women the women played in, their coach of a decade or so was fired, um, and the South African media reported that two 18-year-old uh, women on the team who had been dropped from the team came forward and uh, complained to Safa about um, uh, him, basically, you had to have sex with the coach in order to play. And then on top of that, it was routine that women would be publicly humiliated for not adhering to codes of femininity. 
Um, so athletes that I spoke to would talked about in training sessions that uh, women would be picked out from the team and put in a group, right? If they had long hair and they wore like long braids, and then women who had their heads shaved, or you know, that they would be they would just heap humiliation on the women who appeared to be masculine, right? And then celebrate the femininity of the women who had braids. This is enormously painful, as you might imagine, for all of the players. For on any soccer team, you can't divide people by masculine and feminine and divide people by game straight because it doesn't work that way, right? So you'd have lesbian players who are being celebrated for their, pro their proper embodiment of South African femininity, right? Feeling that they have to be silent as their teammates are being humiliated, right, for wearing short hair. There are reasons for this, right? Uh, there are very, the, our, the, our access to images of female athleticism are very tightly regulated and controlled, right? The spectacle of female sports, right, uh, is a, it's actually, uh, it's like an economy of scarcity. Um, in terms of just having um, access to uh, female athleticism as a spectacular event. Especially when that female athleticism is something that's happening in a very physical sport. I mean, soccer is an extremely physical sport and in a team sport. Um, so what we have is the World Cup and the Olympics. Right? We don't actually have um, um, easy access, certainly, to broadcasts of club matches. Uh, it's barely professionalized. I think that to say the WPS is professional is an exaggeration when we're talking about people on teams who make $3,000 a year. Right? What we're talking about is that they have access to health insurance. Right? That constitutes in the United States professionalization of, of sports. Um, but just that fact, actually, once you start looking around the world, you actually find really interesting stories of the popularity of women's sports across the whole of the 20th century into the 21st um, globally. Right? So uh, uh, regional women's soccer tournaments in Bengal, in India, will draw attendance figures that blow away anything that you'll see in an NCAA tournament. Um, and uh, we're often given the impression that women's sports in the United States is way ahead of the world, right? It is in terms of infrastructure, in terms of the access that women athletes have via their participation in sports, thank you to Title IX and the uh, work of generations of feminist activists, and the particular structure and association of sports with school in the United States, right? means that growing up you can access a level of kind of professionalism in your training that's pretty much unparalleled, especially for youth sports, right? Um, but in terms of the popularity of women's sports, right? uh, you need to, once you start looking around the world, you see that we live with a lot of, we, with some serious mythologies about American women's athleticism, about the acceptance of women's sports in the United States, and which produces a story about US exceptionalism in sports, right? Um, and um, 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 uses the face of women's sports and the women's soccer team, particularly the 99 team, right, as the face of that exceptionalism. But one of the things I find kind of maddening, it really makes me so crazy, I, can be, I start to lose my coherence when I start talking about it, right, is this, this common sense notion that women's soccer is boring, right, and that women's sports is boring, that it's not as interesting as the men's game. Well, you put like one camera on the game, you know, that's kind of at a distance from the field, and there's like 800 people in the stands, guess what? It makes for boring TV, right? You put, when you watch a men's professional game, Think of the numbers of cameras that are actually trained on the game. Think of the control rooms in which editorial decisions are being made that are constructing the game for you as an amazing spectacle. There's a fantastic documentary called The Golden Age about um, amateur men's leagues playing in um, uh, Flushing Meadows in New York. Right? And these are old guys. These are guys in their 50s and 60s from all over South America. These are uh, it's like a, a Latin American uh, a small independent league. The games are actually fun to watch, even though the play is terrible, because it's filmed beautifully, right? You film a game well, and actually you can make almost anything interesting, right? So one of the things that I want to question, right, is the ways in which we actually approach the, uh, the idea of watching a women's game, whether it be basketball or, or, or soccer, and the ways in which we process the common sense wisdom that women are slower, that the game is less powerful, that the game is boring, et cetera, et cetera, at what point, right, is that an, already, an ideologically constructed, like at what point is your vision already organized for you? It's like, they're, it's like they're seeing it as not a commercial investment because women's soccer has no interest and no one will ever be interested in it and it will never be like the men's game, so why should we invest our money in this? Because it's never going to make us any money back, right? So there's a kind of a death spiral um, around a basic, like kind of basic sexist ideology around women's sports combined with the worst of economic um, a kind of uh, capitalist thinking, in essence, about what makes a sports culture great. You know, which is to question, um, you know, sure on some level, like I want to see 
the women's game be like as intense a media spectacle as the men's game is, right? <coughs> and we sort of want, on some level, we think that's what a successful league looks like. That's what a successful sports culture looks like. But it's actually not sustainable, right? And the record of the, men, the England men's national team will demonstrate to you that it's not sustainable, right? It's actually like a, 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 a pulling up um, uh, resources, deeply commodifying them, selling them to everyone in the world, no investment actually in the long-term health of the sports culture, no investment in nurturing the relationship between uh, fans and their local teams, right? It's a fully leveraged game. And so it's actually become really hollowed out and produced a real sort of crisis in terms of what, what the soul of English men's soccer. Right? And to see the sports media, in essence, collaborate on its silence about those things um, is something that I have felt I have not been able to um, um, you know, uh, collaborate. I have not been able to participate in that, right? Even as a, you know, as a blogger, it has forced my attention into these sort of uh, more uh, demoralizing, more depressing, sort of darker sides of the game, because I feel like that's my responsibility. Produced by Duke University. Online at duke.edu.